On the 17th of November, 2022, the two of us took a trip abroad together. The place we chose? Amsterdam. Having left Las Vegas Thursday afternoon, we touched down in Amsterdam's Schiphol Airport on Friday morning. Yes, the plane is very uncomfortable. <laughs> Being in a strange town, the prospect of public transportation was intimidating, but turned out to be immensely convenient. After taking a train to Amsterdam Central, the tram dropped us off only a few blocks away from our VNB located on a short strip of road called Wolvenstraat, just off Canal Herengracht. Arriving at our accommodations brought us our first lesson we learned about Amsterdam. You're gonna walk upstairs. A lot. Steep, thin stairs. Our room had all the convenience of a one-bedroom apartment with a full kitchen and a private bathroom. It was delightful, you know. Uh, the, the guy was very, I would say, Edward was a little clenched. Mm -hmm. uh, which I can obviously relate to. We were tired, but decided we needed to stay up until evening to work through our jet lag. Heading out, we decided to find a coffee shop to sample some of Amsterdam's herbal offerings. Nearly all locals here ride bicycles, as cars are simply impractical with water all around. On any corner or stretch of fence, you will find dozens to hundreds of bicycles chained up. The enforcement of laws here is rather permissive. Essentially, as long as you aren't harming anyone, there is no problem. The locals and police describe this enforcement strategy as, just don't be a dick about it. If you should happen to buy any kind of drug and are suspicious about whether it's pure, you can literally pay a couple of euros to the government and they will test it for you. If it's found to be impure or especially cut with something dangerous, they arrest the drug dealer. After failing to find the shop we had mapped out, we stumbled along to La Tertullian. Climbing up another crazy steep set of stairs to find a table, we enjoyed our purchases to the fullest. Then the terror of trying to climb the ladder with our hot beverage. With that came a bit of hunger, so we moseyed out and promptly got lost. After a half hour or so of panic, we managed to find one end of our street, Wolvenstraat, and decided to pop into a restaurant called La Struisvogel. Not having a heavy appetite and no idea what constitutes expensive, we ordered the soup of the day and were eventually treated to the restaurant's signature creamy sweet potato and coconut soup. And then we got it and it was just amazing. It was Kind of earthy and just like hit the spot. Yeah. Bellies full, we returned to our room for the evening. Before heading out on Saturday, our host treated us to chocolate croissants from the local bakery Wolf. It was delicious. Very good. good. Very filling. We ended up at the Nord Market, which was something like a modern swap meet blended with a farmer's market, and we sampled bulgur salat and many cheeses. It was wonderful. The people were super friendly. They was all different things. From there, we headed to the Anne Frank house. There are two Anne Frank tours here. If you happen to simply show up there, you'll only be able to take the museum tour, which does include a full-size mock-up of the actual house, which is fully furnished to recreate the actual conditions the family lived in. To see the actual house, you need to purchase your tickets on the first Tuesday of the month prior to the month you visit, which we did and had a profound experience visiting the actual rooms which were stripped by the Nazis after discovering the Frank family's possessions and fixtures. The experience was very moving. Like if you think about it, like if you've grown up with hardwood floors um, and, and you're a teenager and you try sneaking around, that shit creaks. Everything obviously creaked. Next on the agenda was the Human Beings of Amsterdam tour, which was a chance to learn about the history of the city going back 850 years and to meet some locals to hear about their stories. I just loved it. I felt like this real connection to the people. Amsterdam is one of the most ethnically diverse cities in the world, featuring over 180 distinct ethnic groups. Diversity is not just embraced in Amsterdam, it's woven into the people's attitudes. There is a Dutch word, geselig, which means something like the warm, cozy, happy feeling that you have amongst family and close friends. 
The folks we met really showed us that. Uh, Zena was amazing. Uh, they lived on a houseboat. After a few facts about the city, the group stopped at the Café Puppen Island, which is renowned for having the best Dutch apple pie in all of Amsterdam. The recipe uses no sugar in the filling, relying on the natural sweetness of the apples. It's a brown bar, which is like a locals only kind of thing. The owner is also a shrewd businessman who refuses to close for a day, even when the Prime Minister of the Netherlands requested to book the entire tavern for one of his guests. His response was to tell the Prime Minister that unless the guest had a disability that required it, he refused to close the place to the public. So the Prime Minister was forced to bring his guest, which turned out to be Bill Clinton. And of course, the Prime Minister greeted the former president on a bicycle. It was at Café Papan Island that we met the first person on our tour, Anya, who was a refugee from the former Yugoslavia and now works with other refugees, acclimating them to the city, helping them find housing, jobs, and even language lessons so they can get along. Her stories and her cause touched us deeply. I just loved her view of wanting to make everyone comfortable and at home and, and cozy and safe. Next, we took a little walk to where we met the flower bike man, Warren. He immigrated here from the U.S. with his wife decades ago for his wife's health. She had been having severe seizures and was misdiagnosed by her doctors in Florida. These seizures would regularly zero out her memory, causing him to have to continually rebuild their relationship with her. Sudden death epilepsy. Bringing her to Amsterdam, they benefited from the socialized medicine and, after finally being diagnosed correctly, she is now receiving the proper care. Unfortunately, some of the damage is irreversible, and so her memory and seizures are still a problem. One day, after failing to find her bike in a parking structure among thousands, Warren had a bright idea to decorate her bike in all flowers so she could never lose it. This began a charitable movement of designing custom flower bikes for special causes all across the city and other places around the world that he still enjoys to this day. The tour continued on through the city where the vibe took a much darker turn in the red light district where the prostitutes advertised their wares through glass. This industry has a limited legal standing here, but since it has been legitimized, these ladies are unionized with health benefits, retirement benefits, and services. Prostitution, it's, it's got its place. Prostitution is taxed and monitored in Amsterdam with their safety taken very seriously. They not only actively investigate pimping and human trafficking with serious legal consequences, they also investigate anyone who might have witnessed either without reporting it, also with serious legal consequences. Our group stopped into a cozy establishment called De Prel, which was founded by Fer Koch and Arno Koy, two former staff members at a psychiatric hospital. Seeing mental disorders differently than most, they opened their doors employing former patients. Of their 170 employees, 150 of them have working mental disabilities. But with their strategic placement catering to them, their disabilities become almost superpowers. I love that just because it's like right up my alley. This is where we heard the story of Lucy, a young immigrant who decided she wanted to try her hand at the sex trade while in college. She discovered that she enjoyed what she did, especially seeing clients with disabilities that present a social barrier. All in all, a fascinating tour. After the tour was completed, we were aware of the fact that we had no idea where we were, so we were forced to rely on local directions to find our way. Over and over, we would follow the directions and get lost again. No matter where we were, each local would tell us we were 10 minutes walking distance away. I thought we'd been walking for two and a half hours! Frustrated, we found our B&B, but we decided we needed to have a drink, so we stopped just down the street at a friendly establishment called De Geit. Being a Saturday, the small place was busy, but we were able to get a seat at the bar and had a great time talking with a bartender named Jenya, who only worked there one night a week to be social and for a change of pace from a career as an aeronautical engineer. After a drink or two, we headed back to our B&B for the night and settled for a freshly made refrigerated pizza from the local grocer. Sunday morning, we decided to find another coffee house to have some superior coffee and again, indulge in their herbal wares. All about the coffee. We stumbled upon a friendly place called Hunter's, which is actually two establishments. A coffee shop where they sell cannabis and coffee, and a cafe where you can take your newly purchased wares and enjoy them with a drink. 
Yet again, we were greeted by a set of stairs so steep that they may as well be a ladder just to use the restroom. The vibe here was kitschy but fun with a random pop culture memorabilia mixed with graffiti theme. I love how innovative the Dutch are. That evening, Jen and I went on our wine and cheese canal cruise where we shared a table with another couple around our age from Calgary. You couldn't see much, but the cruise was all about the people that we sat with, which was Shannon and Robbie, and they were amazing. They were here specifically to see a concert by an audiovisual megalith called The Toppers. She had this crazy, like, leather guest dress that looked fabulous on her. They were really fun people. You just felt good being around them. Unfortunately, the rain was constant through the entire cruise, so taking pictures was problematic. That's why a lot of these images were blatantly stolen from them and their Facebook pages. Yet again, we got lost on our way home, this time for over an hour. I swear, the roads here are like the stairways at Hogwarts. We got lost again? <laughs> we decided again to stop at De Geit and drink our frustration away. This time, we met the owners of the cafe and spent a good amount of time getting to know them. They had just bought the place three months earlier with the dream of just having a fun place for their friends and to make new ones. Money obviously wasn't De Geit's concern as they more than doubled the drinks we paid for with free drinks. One of the owners even took the time to explain that the whole point was to socialize. He didn't care if it lost money as long as they could all have fun. He made mention of not having TVs in the place because, in his words, if you're watching TV, you're not paying attention to each other. The cozy feeling of Chiselig was part of his mission. We cashed out for the night and started to go home, but that was when his colleague, Roland, began deluging us with drinks. Like, way too many. We had an amazing time getting to know people, but we eventually decided to head just across the way to our B&B for the night to crash. Monday morning, we took the suggestion of our B&B host and headed across the canal to ABC Club Sandwich for an early lunch. While they make an excellent club sandwich, they also take it up a notch with variations that involve Caprese Clubs and even Fish Clubs. Just love the Caprese um, sandwich. Love, yeah, just the, mm. We had a fairly placid day enjoying the city. In the late afternoon, we went back to De Geit for just some cups of tea on the patio. I don't know what made us so easy to approach, but we were soon joined by more new friends, Detta and Emily. Okay. And then the shots. By the end of the night, we'd been put under the table again, so we headed home to our B&B. Too much chaselig. Tuesday morning, we needed to recover, so we rested for the most part until we felt well enough to head out to our foodie excursion, which unfortunately didn't pan out. Despondent that we'd missed our food experience, we headed back to Wolvenstraat, making sure to avoid the Geit, because we had learned our lesson. Instead, we went past Strisvogel and walked through the town where we enjoyed more tea. Having been primed for good food, we started walking back and stumbled across restaurant de Schwante. Our meals began with a soup course of split pea for me and creamy tomato for Jennifer. For our main course, we enjoyed lamb chops cooked to perfection and a succulent grilled cod. The people here do not mess around. It was absolutely filling. Wednesday, we reserved for all of our souvenir shopping and we had a great time with that, but we happened to pass what looked like a family-owned grocer. The amazing smell of North African spices wafted out the front door, so we had to go in. It was Algerian food, made with lots of love. Jennifer had the tagine with chicken, and I had it with salmon. It was amazing. It was so earthy and filling and delicious. As it was our last evening, we wanted to say goodbye to our friends at De Geit. We stopped in for tea, and only tea, before heading to Streisvogel for a reservation. The wait for Streisvogel was worth it. For the first course, Jennifer had the burrata cheese and red grapefruit salad with pomegranate, while I had the French onion soup. For our main course, Jennifer had the Durad filet with shrimp and vegetables, while I, of course, opted for the steak with vegetables. Jennifer's Durad was light, moist, and flavorful. The steak was served with a peppercorn sauce, almost like a steak au poivre. It was cooked to a perfect medium rare and was so tender I cut it with a butter knife. The peppercorn sauce would have been perfect with anything. 
For the dessert course, we had a cheesecake in a blackberry sauce and paired it with a glass of port. Absolutely wonderful, with our only complaint being that we would have preferred more of the blackberry sauce. Oh yeah, it was great. The yeah, atmosphere. The fish. Love the atmosphere. This was the highlight meal of the trip and a perfect last night. Satiated, we headed back to our B&B and got some sleep as we had an early morning heading back to the airport to head to where reality waits us in America. What a trip. Full of poignant moments, discoveries, great food, strong drinks, good friends, and a history almost four times as long as America. For all of the uniqueness and adventure there is in Amsterdam, the real jewel of the city is its people. Always willing to help. Not just pointing you the right way, but often walking you there personally. In their own words, we help each other out. Always. Leaving Amsterdam, there are countless words I could use to describe the people, places, and food we enjoyed. There really is only one word you need to know. Heselic.